Since we signed the uh, Naivasha protocols on May 26th, we have been moving around in the New Sudan, explaining and sensitizing people now. Uh, our aim is to explain and brief our constituencies in all parts of the Sudan, in the, in the south, in the north, in the west, in the east, in the far north. And, uh, and in the center of what is it that has been signed, the peace agreement, and how can we use it in order to effect a democratic transformation of our country. And, and that's what I would like to do today. Uh, take this occasion to continue what we are doing at home, to brief and inform the Sudanese diaspora of the peace process and the peace agreement. Because we want this peace agreement unlike the Addis Ababa agreement and other peace agreements that they have been signed in the Sudan to be owned by the people and for the Sudanese people to use, to use it for their own empowerment. Because if the agreement is not owned by the people, then anybody can come around and dishonor it. As Abel Elier has written, too many agreements dishonored. So we want this agreement to be owned and used by the people for their own benefit. That way they will be able uh, to defend it, uh, and that way the agreement can last. The six protocols, or the six protocol agreements that we have signed in Machakos and in, uh, in Naivasha, if and when implemented, will lead to solving the fundamental problem of the Sudan. Uh, it, is, it, it is not peace per se, uh, because uh, even a graveyard is peaceful. And so when I say that, uh, when I talk about the peace agreement in the Sudan, I do not, I cannot disconnect it with the need for fundamental change in the Sudan. Because peace within the context of the old Sudan is not peace, but a continuation of war in a different form. <laughs> Therefore, it is important for me to revisit the problem of the Sudan itself, the problem that we set out to solve, so that we put the peace process in the context of solving what I have called the fundamental problem of the Sudan. So what is the problem of the Sudan? al Junubin in the past have called it Mashkla Junub, and uh, we have disagreed with a lot of people on this, because we have said that uh, there is no, there is no Mashkla Junub. <laughs> what is the problem in the, in the 
uh, at least southerners should not be talking about masculinity, you know. Uh, it, uh, I figurative, figuratively say that is as old yeah who got for a if somebody comes and sits on my back, who is the problem? The person being sat on or the per person sitting on? <laughs> if the person sitting on me, that is the problem, not, not I being sat on. <laughs> and so it cannot possibly be a problem of masculinity, you know. Uh, I said it in, uh, in all objectivity that it is not the problem of uh, Southern Sudan. If you want to give it a label, and when I came here, I believe it was in 1995, I said if you want to give the problem a geographical name, then the Maiskele de Shumal. The Maiskele de Junu. The Maiskele de Shumal. The Maiskele de Shumal. The Maiskele de Sulta fil Khartoum. That is the fundamental problem of the Sudan. It is not the problem with our Darfur, or the problem with our Yubala Nuba, or the problem with our Bija, or the problem with our Nubians in the far north, or the problem with our Masakin, the Umbadda, or the Umdruman. It is a problem of governance in Khartoum itself. As a Mahitum Biarif, we have had nothing but war since independence. As if independence has been a curse. It was men in the 1955, some of us were born in war, uh, grew up in war, went to school in war, and grew gray hair in war. I just never heard. We changed gears. We changed gears. Uh, in terms of the answer we gave. We said, no, it is not the problem of the Sudan. In our view, the problem is the attempt by various Khartoum-based regimes to build a monolithic Arab Islamic state to the exclusion of other parameters of the Sudanese diversity as constituting the fundamental problem of the Sudan and defining the Sudanese conflict. The vast majorities of the Sudanese people are therefore excluded from governance and are marginalized in the political, economic, and social fields. And this provokes resistance by the excluded, the neglected, the marginalized, and the oppressed. The Arab Islamic State ends up being imposed by force. Governance in the Sudan became chauvinistic and eventually fascist. It is clearly shown now by the situation in Darfur. Relying on brute force for the, for the ruling NIF elite to maintain its power, rather than by consent of the government through a consensual social contract. And when I say uh, an, an Islamic Arab state, I'm not, take, I'm not talking in, in derogatory terms at all, because I have made it very clear before that uh, our vision, our uh, ideology uh, of society is that we are all Sudanese, whether we are of Arab origin or of African origin. And you know this insistence on our Arabiness. <laughs> Let us become Sudanese. What is wrong with this? At all does not mean that we will drop our Arab uh, cultural heritage because it is a major uh, contribution to Sudanese culture and to the Sudanese identity. <laughs> that does not mean we drop Islam because Islam is a Sudanese religion. <laughs> let us first and foremost accept ourselves as Sudanese. This, this is what can unite us. Uh, I'll, 
Aruba cannot unite, unite us. Africanism that is opposed to Arab, to Aruba cannot unite us. Islam cannot unite us. Christianity cannot unite us. But Sudanism can unite us. Because it is the common <laughs> Let us also drop these crazy ideas that we must all be Arabs. Even God will not accept this. <laughs> infinite wisdom. It is this same God that made the Arabs, that made the Nuba, that made the Fool, that made the Dinka, that made the Nubians, that made the Bija, that, that, that made the Shuluk, that made all the 500 different ethnic groups in the Sudan. And who is this to amend God's creation? This person. I would say is against God. I will win this case. Is a mind that anchor in history, uh, then you are a nobody, and whatever you are doing will come to nothing. Lakin ande na hujud hagiri fitarik. We go back, we go back a long, a long ways, and sometimes it is necessary to go back in order to go forward. And we need, we, we need to make this exercise in the Sudan so that we can find our bearings. Because if you, if you, if you don't have a past, then you, you cannot possibly have a future. But then we do not fall from the sky. We have been here all along. There is also a series of books, uh, The General History of Africa by UNESCO. Volumes one to seven. And volume two is, uh, covers the Nile Valley and the Horn of Africa. I recommend that uh, uh, you read, uh, you, you acquire and read this book. Uh, it's by UNESCO and uh, it, it, uh, it, it is authoritative. It has, it has lots of research. I also recommend that uh, you read a lot about ancient Egypt, and, uh, which is very much interconnected with the Sudan. We have a long history. Peoples and kingdoms have lived, thrived, and disappeared in the geographical area now that constitutes the present Sudan. Yet and despite all this wealth of historical evidence, the present and previous rulers in Khartoum present a false picture of our country as if the Sudan started with them and as if the history and reality of the Sudan consists only of specific parameters, Arabism and Islamism. We are, we are much bigger than that. <laughs> Our contention in the SPLM is that the Sudan belongs to all the peoples that now inhabit the country, and its history, its diversity, and, its, and, and richness is the common heritage of all the Sudanese people. It is important to establish this firm anchor in history and to affirm that the Sudan and we the Sudanese are indeed a historical people. 
And so let no one push you off the rails of history. And I was in the Zook Barram in the Tariq, in the Kanga Shinagola. And I am here to stay, and I have equal rights like anybody else. This is, I have called this historical diversity. And it is very rich. We, we should, our academicians, our scholars, should have Muzid Menele study. We should have uh, interdisciplinary uh, teams from various disciplines to study our languages. Because there's a lot of commonality. We articulated our objective as the achievement of the new Sudan, a new Sudanese political dispensation, and that this new Sudanese political dispensation cannot be forced on people. It must be voluntary. And therefore, in our literature, we have what we call voluntary unity of the country. That is where the issue of the right of self-determination comes in. And it is important that this be put in its proper context. The, self, the right of self-determination, and it has concerned many, many northerners that this will bring the disunity, that it will bring suppression. And I say quite categorically, yes, it can bring suppression if the new Sudan is not achieved. Mafis all Bekbel, nobody would accept to be a second-class citizen in his or her own country. And so, unless we achieve a new Sudanese political dispensation, a new Sudan that belongs to all of us equally, in which we are equally stakeholders, then why should I, why should I remain in a country where I'm called Abid? No, I will not. But then, let us therefore take the bull by the horns and change the Sudan so that it belongs to all of us, so that it remains united. Otherwise, I forget. Uh, what is it that we have agreed? We have signed six uh, agreements, Machakos, security arrangements, wealth sharing, power sharing, two areas with Ajubal and Nuba, and Blue Nile, Wabiye. Uh, these six protocol agreements constitute the core peace agreement and so we can actually say that we have reached a, a, a peace agreement. We are left only with two issues, a comprehensive ceasefire and implementation modalities, which, shall, which, which will be annexes. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of the peace agreement. We don't have the time to do that. Uh, but uh, and they are also available in the internet. You can visit our website, www.splmtoday.com. They are also available in other Sudanese websites. And, and, and many of you have read uh, these documents. I am aware that the new Sudan has been criticized by some people in the past as utopian, that it is wishful thinking. Uh, this is because, as we have seen, the new Sudan has several dimensions. It is at the same time a vision which guides us as well as an objective to be achieved. And also it, it, it embodies elements of a strategy and tactics. And so for those who see the new Sudan only as a vision, they conclude that it is unrealistic. While for those who see it as an objective, they conclude that it is unachievable. While those who see the new Sudan as a strategy and tactics lose sight of the vision aspects and easily get distracted <coughs> in the course of the struggle. And sometimes they end up capitulating overwhelmed by the enormity of the vision and the duration of the struggle. And so some people try to take shortcuts, such as the Khartoum Peace Agreement, the Fashoda Agreement, the Djibouti Peace Agreement. There are no shortcuts and no easy walk to freedom and no easy walk to New Sudan. The only viable political framework, I believe, for the SPLM, for the NDA, and for the National Congress Party even, and for all the political forces in the Sudan, is the vision and program of the new Sudan. All other political programs 
whether it is Dawaj al Hadari of the National Congress Party or the quasi liberal democratic regimes of the past or military dictatorship can only result in the disintegration of our country. Only Al Sudan Al Jadid Al Bashmul Nehna Kuluna will preserve the unity of our country. And, you should, and this should be, be taken seriously. Because uh, we have seen uh, what, uh, what has, has happened. No regime should be allowed to declare jihad against its own people. This is, this is a recipe for disaster. How you, do, you say those people will declare jihad on them? Now, in this context, I want to, I wa I want to, to talk about uh, Darfur, because some people are mystified about what is going on in Darfur. And, 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 and uh, it, 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 is, it, it, is, it, is, it is tragic, but it was bound to happen. What is happening in Darfur is, uh, is, 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 is uh, government, what I would call government counterinsurgency gone wrong. See, counterinsurgency, and this is a military, uh, it's a military subject. When a regime is confronted with, with insurgency, it develops counterinsurgency. Hajar the tomorrow. I don't know what the counterinsurgency is in Arabic. Yeah, that's right. Mudata tomorrow good. Al Mudata tomorrow da. The logic of it is that the government recruits people, individuals, from the constituency of the Mutamaradin, from the constituency of the insurgents. Government trains this and forms them into counterinsurgency units. These counterinsurgency units then fight alongside regular troops to defeat the insurgents. So far, this is legitimate. And you go to any US training school here, you will find FMs, field manuals, on counterinsurgency. What has happened in the Sudan is different from what I have just said, recruiting individuals from the constituency of the insurgents. Why, 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 why do, do governments do this? Because these individuals, they know the local languages, they know the local cultures, they know the local terrains. So they will di direct the military. They will help the military. They are supplementary. They assist the regular forces. In the Sudan, it is not individuals that are recruited from the constituency of the insurgents. It is tribes that are recruited. Ethnic groups or elements of ethnic groups that are recruited and they are told, and another ethnic group is identified as the enemy. And so you have counterinsurgency tribes. It happened in the South before. Militia. The government used militia, tribe, tribal based militias to mobilize their tribes to attack other tribes. This is what happened in Rwanda. The, 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 the tribe of the, of, of, of the, of the president, Habriamana, the Hutu, were used as a counterinsurgency tribe against the Tutsi, who were the tribe of the rebellion. The same thing is happening in the Sudan, that the elements of Arab tribes in Darfur, and it is not all the Arab tribes, and the majority of the Arab tribes in Darfur are against this. <laughs> but government use, uses elements of them, just as they use them the, the, in the South. So the Modo, it is not Modo, but are Arabs against Africans, because there are no Arabs in the South. But the same counterinsurgency strategy was used to devastate, recently, the Shulu Kingdom, and some of you heard it was devastated by this, uh, by this tribal uh, based militias and this government counterinsurgency. And so I want to say very clearly that the, the, the problem in Darfur is not the Janjaweed as such. The Janjaweed are only a tool. The problem in Darfur is
the problem of Darfur is the, count, is the government counter-insurgency counter strategy. It should not happen. No government should be allowed to use tribes against tribes in order to remain in power. The bigger And so when the, when the international community says, talks about the disarmament, well, the government should disarm the ginger wheel. It's, it's a big joke. <laughs> because it is the same government that armed the ginger wheel. And so how can the same government disarm part of its forces? So the solution must be what I said before, to have a new government in Khartoum. <laughs> now, when I say to have a new government in Khartoum, I'm not saying that the, the NIF and the National Congress Party should go. We have an agreement with them. But according to that agreement, we actually have a new government a government of national unity. Fogo National Congress Party, Fogo SPLM, Fogo other political forces. It is this new government that will have the political and moral will and capacity to solve the problems of the, of, 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 of the country as a whole. And so we have three processes that should go concurrently. Government should negotiate with the NDA, and we are doing this in Cairo at the end of, uh, of, of the month, and complete uh, that uh, negotiation so as to reach agreement with the NDA. Government should negotiate with the, with the armed opposition in Darfur so as to reach political agreement with the armed opposition in Darfur, and we initiate a, a program of reconciliation among the tribes in Darfur because they will continue to, 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 to remain in Darfur because they are Darfurians, and Arab tribes and the African tribes. Governments will come and go. Lakin a sha'ab bita Darfur hatabga. And so there must be a process of reconciliation uh, among them. The Naivasha process, which has already been concluded, must be, must be must, the, six, the six agreements, the two remaining agreements must be completed so that the three processes, negotiations al Hasra fi Abuja, being an armed opposition with Darfur, one uh, negotiations based on the Jeddah Protocol al Hasra fi, uh, fi, Cairo, fi Cairo, and the Naivansha uh, agreements should all be combined with Yusuf fi uh, Salam. Kabir al Naskulu. I don't see a contradiction between the three processes. I don't see any contradiction between Naivasha and Cairo. Or Cairo and Naivasha and Abuja. It is one process. Nisbal Taqsima Sulta, which we covered before, there is room for, uh, for, for Darfur because the division of uh, power in the central government is between the south and the north. For the SPLM bus, inshallah, Habu, Haga Haga del Pino. El Hia Teletin Filmia. Sabain Filmia, Lil Shumal. This is according to uh, population. And so, Nas Darfur, Unas Jubal and Nuba, Unas Nas Nil al Azraq, Unas Sharaka Sudan. When has new Kush, uh, this Kush organization, Yamshi and Shiru Nisbe Bito means Sabain Filmir. We have uh, we have lots of programs that, uh, with the peace agreement reached, we have lots of ideas as to what peace means to to us uh, in the SPLM. It, it, it means a paradigm shift in summary that uh, we need to initiate development pro programs for Junub, for Jubal, for Nil al Azraq, for Gharb, for Sharak, for Sudan Kulu. New paradigms of development. Uh, 
What do I mean by that? There are lots of things. We have, uh, we have lots of resources. Uh, fee oil, for example. We don't want to, experience, to, to repeat the experience with uh, other countries where they use the oil money uh, to build a consumer society uh, by just importing goodies from outside. We want to use the oil money literally to fuel agriculture. In summary, we shall articulate and implement a social, political, and economic development strategy that includes the following. Uh, one, it is a strategy that shall address the root causes that foster recurrent civil wars so that these wars end in peaceful and just resolution of the conflicts all over our country, including Darfur and Eastern Sudan. This will be achieved through establishing what, I have, what, what we have called people sovereignty, a people-centered form of governance, a true social contract between the people and their government. People should not be alienated. What we have in the Sudan is how people even view the hakuma, hakuma bishuvu, as uh, an object to be looted. <laughs> uh, and, and, and when somebody, uh, I don't know how it is in the in the north, but I believe it is the same mentality. Can so be the wazir five years ago? Ah, she will let you land. Be the wazir comes to say, "Well, let banana, well, let السلام <تصفيق> ويضعون يديه في بعضها دليلا على مرحلة South Sudan and indeed the whole Sudan has lost its beloved son, Dr. John Garang de Mabior, the first vice president of the Republic of Sudan and the president of South Sudan was on an official visit to Uganda during the period from 29th to 30th of July 2005 when the helicopter he was traveling in crashed near uh, south of Nyokush on his return last Saturday. be involved so that they put pressure on the government so that the government behaves itself for an intifada asul should be continuous in different forms mushla is qad nizam lakin la adab al nizam ashani adabu al nizam so that the 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 government 
behaves according to the contract into Muhammad Tumau. The same thing with the, uh, with the armed struggle. The armed struggle will continue, lakin, not through uh, shooting of bullets, uh, but through the threat of the use of force. I shall hold tenaciously to the process of cooperation and good working relationship with President Omar Hassan Ahmed al-Bashir and Vice President Taha, which was initiated by my parting brother, John, in the very short spell he had in the, in the presidential offices. Smooth relationship within the institution of the presidency shall be key to the successful implementation of the CPA. The SPLM shall continue to use its good offices. Peace shall not be complete without the extinction of the fires of, the, of war in Darfur and Eastern Sudan. <laughs> Thank you.